For a 17th consecutive season, the Aztecs are moving on in a Mountain West tournament. John Schaefer with you from Las Vegas, Nevada on this Thursday evening, looking back at a thrilling back and forth roller coaster win, I think would be a good way to describe it against UNLV and looking ahead to a Friday night showdown between Utah State and San Diego State. So you can tell I'm in my hotel room uh, back from the Thomas and Mac, um, hopefully here through Saturday night, San Diego State will win away from playing in a seventh consecutive Mountain West championship game. So make your way in, join the live chat. If you have comments, if you have questions, uh, if you want me to react to something, I will do my best to do that here tonight. So please make your way in, whether you're here live or on replay. If you're here on replay, you can comment down below. Appreciate you guys that are here. Um, we have year-round content for Aztec fans, so please subscribe. Year-round content, not just Aztec fans, whether it's football, basketball, fans of the Mountain West. Um, we talk about it here on the wrap-up show, presented by my friend Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. Uh, this was a game that had a little bit of everything that you just want to win and then put it to bed and move on. That's this time of year, isn't it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it survived advanced time, and we can get into particulars because this isn't the NCAA tournament. There's room for improvement, obviously, between now and hopefully next week as well. But I think we learned a lot about San Diego State today because, remember, they were coming off a couple of tough, close losses. And I had heard repeatedly from Aztec fans, from people on social media, from people on my radio show, John and Jim, from our text line at San Diego Sports 760, that what I had heard is this team can't win close games. And they don't know how to finish games. And this game had a little bit of everything, obviously, late. But consider the circumstances. San Diego State led 60 to 50 with a, just over six minutes to play. I forget the exact time. But let's say between six and seven minutes, six and a half minutes to play. UNLV goes on their run. Aztecs go cold. Deedon Thomas takes over down the stretch. Aztecs mid, miss free throws. Right? It's, a, it's an everything that can go wrong, will go wrong scenario. Murphy's Law, right? And Thomas hits the acrobatic shot in the lane, 0.5 seconds or so to play. You're tied up. You're thinking, you got no shot. From a momentum perspective, from where you are, from where you were, six minutes earlier, you're, you've got a 10-point lead. You can, you can taste it. It feels like you've got a chance to maybe blow it open a little bit. Maybe you can stretch it out to 14 or 15 and breathe easy for the final 90 seconds. Not to be. As Texas, we know we can get into it. Uh, missed opportunities at the free throw line. And then Deedon Thomas and UNLV took advantage. So, and then, then kind of um, parlay it with this. UNLV goes up four in overtime, which reminds you of Friday against Boise State at Viejas, where Max Rice heaves a shot, it goes in. And you're down five and you're thinking game's over. Now, to San Diego State's credit on senior night, they got back even in that game, like a parish offensive rebound and scored. Darian Trammell clutch three, and we will get into Trammell. I promise you that. We will get into Ladi. I promise you that. We'll get into all the particulars. Um, I've got nowhere to go. So I got a better part of the next hour if you guys are going to be here. So make your way in and subscribe, smash the like button and comment. But you go down four in overtime, UNLV has all momentum. I mean, you got none of it. And the Aztecs found a way. How? Tremel, tough layup. Ladie hit two free throws. He went 11 of 18. He hit two to tie it up. Then there was a Whaley slam, I want to say, from UNLV. And then Ladie hits one of two. Misses the second. Aztecs get a stop. And then they draw up a play inside of 30 seconds. So remember, Aztecs have had some chances to win games late, right? Micah Parrish in Vegas had a shot blocked 10 days ago. Um, against Boise State, um, I'm trying to, obviously at the free throw line with Lamont, right? So, and there's other games. There's other games they had chances. Nevada on the road. Um, chances to win at the end of regulation and overtime. Didn't pull it out. Tonight they did. How they turned to Jaden Ladee, and Ladee just flat out made a play. Um, and it was not easy. Watch that play back. When they give it to him around the free throw line, there's about 15 seconds left, 17 seconds left, and he just kind of curls from the free throw line and goes high off the glass to lay it in. Like, this is not some 99% layup for Ladee. He goes high over a defender off the glass and kisses it home. And there's still plenty of time. And UNLV misses, was it a finger roll from Thomas in the lane? And then the Aztecs secure the rebound. They hit the two free throws. They take a timeout. And still, UNLV, and we could discuss this as well, Dutch had a funny, funny line out of it. He said out of the timeout, the plan was to double Thomas, and we left him unguarded. Um, but again, he missed a shot. Um, something that clearly um, will be worked on and watched moving forward, that final play. Um, Essex dodged a bullet there, but they won the game. They won the game. And if you've watched San Diego State basketball over the years, and people here have, you know that in Mount West quarterfinal games, this is par for the course. 
you know, I've watched maybe in person five or six of these over the last seven years, and I have seen what played out today play out before. I think back to an Air Force game a few years ago. Maybe was it when San Diego State was 30 and two? That might have been Wyoming when Wyoming just took the air out of the ball and stayed within arm's reach for basically 40 minutes. I remember there was an Air Force game within the last seven years where the Aztecs trailed by 10 or 15 points, maybe 15, maybe 17 um, in a quarterfinal game. So they can be tricky. Other teams are playing for their tournament lives, for their futures, for their next day too. This was never supposed to be a cakewalk. I think people get a little bit confused about this. Like I even saw, and most people have been level-headed with it, um, but I'm seeing the reaction. Hey, Mike, of oh, for eight from the floor. Understood. If you asked him, he would tell you he needs to be better, and he missed two free throws. That's what he would tell you. But that's not a reason to go off the deep end over it. You're going to need Micah Parrish. Reese Waters was one for seven in this game, was in some foul trouble early, has not gotten his shooting stroke going here recently. You're going to need Reese Waters. This isn't the time to pile on. This is the time to survive in advance. Like, if you can win without playing perfect basketball, and oh, by the way, they did didn't play perfect basketball. They struggled to shoot in the first half. They've really struggled to shoot in Vegas. They got going in the second half. They started eight for their first 10 or nine for their first 10 in the second half and really struggled down the stretch, although they did get to the free throw line. They just didn't capitalize. So it wasn't perfection. What it was was brilliance from Jane Ledee taking advantage of the fact that Caleb Boone was out. San Diego State was plus 19 on the glass. That is massive against a good rebounding team. Now, they were shorthanded. They were shorthanded. We should acknowledge it. It happens. San Diego State's been shorthanded before. UNLV tried to give it a go with Caleb Boone. He's a very good player. His brother's a very good player. Thomas is clearly a very good player. Um, and San Diego State had 25 offensive rebounds. I mean, that is a massive, massive number. It also speaks to the fact that, you know, you're not shooting 50% and getting 25 offensive rebounds. But the offensive rebounds, I think 20-second chance points, um, 50 to 31 rebounding edge. And that's not just because of Caleb Boone. They're big. Whaley, the other Boone brother, their guards are 6'6", six, six, right? They're, they're big. I mean, the only quote-unquote small player, guard or forward out there is Deion Thomas. He's not tiny. He's 6'1". Um, so I think San Diego State deserves credit. I mean, Jay Powell had 10 and 9 in this game, 10 points and 9 rebounds. But it obviously starts with Jaden Ladee. So let's start there. And, you know, I know that people are going to say, well, if he, you know, if he goes 17 of 18 from the free throw line, he scores 40 points. True. It's hard to go 17 of 18 from the free throw line. I think he came in at 72%. And you may have watched this game and said, oh, my gosh, he struggled so mightily. 11 of 18 is not 5 of 18. Um, he's had a game or two like this. He's had other games where he's been 12 of 12 or, you know, 13 of 14. So and the other thing is there's sheer exhaustion that kind of sets in. He played 39 minutes, and he doesn't just play like ho-hum 39 minutes. He drew 17 fouls, called. Truthfully, he drew 35 fouls probably. He talked about it postgame and said he feels like he gets fouled every single time. You know, I don't know if it was tongue-in-cheek or not. He knows he's not going to get every single call or he's not going to get a whistle every single time he touches the ball. But he scores 34. He was 2 of 12 10 days ago against UNLV folks on their senior night. He's 11 of 21 in this game. He gets the free throw line 18 times. He hit a three. He had 16 rebounds, seven on the offensive end. What more can you ask of him? And don't tell me what I'm asking of him is to hit more free throws. There was exhaustion. He's a 72% shooter. Yeah, he goes 11 of 18. What he should have done statistically is go 13 of 18. It's not that big of a difference. Yeah, one more free throw could have prevented overtime. But one more any play, right? I mean, UNLV is kicking themselves right now because they turned the ball over at the end of the first half, the most careless turnover you've ever seen. Out of a timeout, 1.6 seconds to play. They inbound it. The ball's just thrown over the middle near half court. Tramel leaning into a three, nails it. Only three of the half for the Aztecs. They had trailed by 10 a moment earlier. Lamont Butler hits two free throws. Tramel hits a three. It's a new game. And San Diego State, it was a turning point. They capitalized. They played great basketball the first five minutes of the second half. Rewatch it uh, if you don't remember how it played out. Again, they were having success from the floor, playing with really good energy. I thought they played great basketball to start the second half. Um, and then UNLV, to their credit, when they went down 60-50, I thought maybe that was it because, again, they're shorthanded. I thought maybe San Diego State would keep them at arm's reach. I really did think that. UNLV made plays. Uh, Boone hit a three. Keelan Boone, he's such a good shooter. Uh, Thomas just made plays, and sometimes you credit a player for making plays. I and mean, he scores 29 points as a true freshman, 10 of 21 shooting, five assists. Um, by the way, Butler, 12 points in this game, five of eight shooting, made huge plays, played 40 minutes. 
Trammell, massive threes, not just the one at the end of the first half, but two he hit in the second half. He had 11 points. The point guards combined for eight assists, five turnovers. You say, okay, five turnovers and maybe one too high. You're pushing two to one assist to turnover, which is where you want to be. They had eight assists. Um, so, uh, you know, I thought Butler, Trammell, really good. I thought Powell rebounding the basketball was awesome in this game. He had 10 points, four of 10 shooting, hit a three, had nine rebounds, four on the offensive end. Micah Parrish, everyone's going to tell me he went 0 for 8. He's got to find his shot. He was 0 for 6 from beyond the arc. He missed two critical free throws. And listen, we can all critique, and it's fair, and I'm sure he's telling you the exact same thing. He had four offensive rebounds in this game. His plus minus was second highest on the team today. It's not the only indicator, but when they made their run to start the second half, the starters were on the floor. Pal, Parrish, Tramel Butler, Ledee. So, listen, of course, it's going to be hard to win the NCAA tournament with – players having those types of shooting nights, right? Parrish 0 for 8, Waters 1 for 7. Saunders, you know, he had been really good. He was 0 for 5 in this game in 17 minutes, 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. I thought he just missed one or two being there courtside here today. But I, I don't think it's a day to really complain. I think it's a day to say you get another shot at Utah State and you get a player of the year against a player of the year, um, believe it or not, when you get – Again, Jaden Ledee opposite great Asabor. Um, okay, if you are here, I'm going to get to the Super Chats. Appreciate your support of the channel. really do. I'm coming to you live tonight from Las Vegas. Um, downtown is where I am. Of course, the Mountain West semifinal is tomorrow between the top seed Utah State and the fifth seed San Diego State. That's at 6.30. Pre-game coverage, by the way, on San Diego Sports 760 at 6. John and Jim, my radio show, will begin at 3. We'll be talking about it. Um, so please join us. Uh, search for John and Jim on YouTube or find us on the free iHeartRadio app or just tune in if you're in Southern California to San Diego Sports 760. Uh, if you're here, please subscribe. Smash the like button for me. Follow me on X or Twitter at John Schaefer. You see my name at the bottom of your screen, J-O-N-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. I will tell you about our title sponsor, Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. As we roll along, I do appreciate your support. If you're here live, thank you for the super thanks. I'll get to every single super thanks. Uh, I'll get to as many comments as I can here today, but I'll get to every single th- super thanks. I can guarantee that. Uh, if you're here on replay, thank you for, um, or excuse me, live super chats. If you're on replay, super thanks. And if you want to become a member, get emojis and badges, you can click join down below. Kevin, thank you. I've been on a soliloquy for the last 13 minutes. So thank you for the first super chat of the night. Again, click the dollar sign below the chat box. Um, he says, upside. This team has had some bad offensive stretches, and defense has kept things close in every game except at the pit. Postseason Aztec time. I like the perspective. So let me go to Ken Palm right now. Aztecs entered the day 21st in this metric, this key metric, and they remain at 21st with their overtime win. Their defensive metrics, their efficiency defensively, is eighth in the nation. Their offensive efficiency for some of the struggles, for what people have said, is 66th. They were 74th a year ago. Now they have um, ticked back, so to speak, maybe in the second half of the year. But for comparison, they're nearly identical to Kansas. Now Kansas is on hard times right now in the Big 12. Kansas' offense, 65th. Kansas's defense, ninth. Okay, just for comparison's sake, and San Diego State's 21st in this metric, and Kansas is 22nd. Um, you know, again, I think defense is a great point. I made this point yesterday, I think, on the radio on John and Jim on my radio show. I said, you got to know what the DNA of a team is. Uh, Brian Dutcher writing on the whiteboard today, we got to rebound. And that's what they did. They know how to – the key here is not winning 100-80 to in the NCAA tournament or the Mountain West tournament. Would you take it? Of course. I go back to that Furman game where they kind of blew the doors off Furman, and they did it in all areas. Offense, defense, there's no special teams, but you get my point. Um, But that's not typically how it works. You're in close games where – a couple of plays could be the difference, and a couple of stops could be the difference. Um, you know, Padres play Petco Park. It's a very good pitcher's yard. You win with pitching. You can have position players, but you're not going to outslug people 10-8 every single night at Petco Park. You need good pitching. The Aztecs have a calling card and a DNA that has worked routinely um, and with rare exception for the better part of a quarter century. Um, and specifically in this Mountain West, um, in this league and in this Mountain West Conference tournament where the Aztecs are playing in a semifinal for seemingly like the 100th year in a row. And they've played in six consecutive tournament championship games. We'll see if they can make it seven for seven under Brian Dutcher. you got to win with defense and rebounding. I get it. Everyone wants to see the Aztecs shoot 44% from beyond the arc, not 30%. And everyone wants to see all these players heat up. And it's all fair and it's all, all accurate and it all has value. But you know what also has value? Getting stops. What also has value 
is the way they came out and defended in the first five minutes of the second half. What also has value is being plus 19. What also has value is being uh, having 25 offensive rebounds, which is a massive, massive number. So there's multiple ways to win is the point. Um, and some teams win with style. Some teams win with finesse. Some teams win with athleticism. Some teams win with defense. Uh, some teams win with rebounding. You get my point. You get my point. I, I think that's San Diego State. Consider what they've replaced. I mean, we've talked about this extensively. Now you're 30-something games in. It's not like they're expecting Nathan Mensa to walk through that door at this point. You don't have that type of rim protector, and you have a top-10 defense in America. How? Because of a collective team effort. Because all nine in the rotation and beyond there, but the nine you see, you know, by and large right now during the season, um, defend first. They really do. I mean, they, they, they are playing – an elite level at that end a lot, especially over the last, you know, you, you look at really conference play, but even the last month of the year, and the Essex haven't been perfect, but even some of the games they've lost, they've lost low scoring games. They've lost games where they're holding opponents to 40% shooting for the game. So that to me is encouraging. If you, It's one thing if you're losing games 90 to 84, like what is going on? Why are they giving up 90 points? They're not giving up 90 points. And the games they lost in Vegas 10 days ago, like this game, coin flip game, could have been won. Deion Thomas made a play, step back over Jay Powell. Uh, the game against Boise absolutely could have been won. They didn't win it. That's sports. That's basketball. That happens. We all understand that. How did FAU feel um, coming out of the Final Four game against San Diego State? You know, that, that's just sports. That happens. You want to be on the right side as opposed to the wrong side. Um, okay, so that's kind of my initial soliloquy. Now, we're here live. Um, for people that watch it on replay, you're going to know what the quarterfinal matchups are. New Mexico and Boise are at the half. New Mexico, I don't know if it's win and in because it's contingent on everything else going on around the country. There's other teams that are on the bubble that are trying to force the hand of the selection committee. I think New Mexico should feel good about its at-large tournament resume with a victory tonight at the Thomas and Mac against Boise State. It's halftime as we do this live, and New Mexico has played well. They lead 35-26. Um, they had not played well down the stretch of the season. They did play well yesterday against Air Force, avenging a loss of the pit. And tonight, um, they have held Boise to 25% shooting in the first half. Now, it's only 20 minutes in, and it's only a nine-point lead. So they'll probably be a topsy-turvy second half. It's something to consider. I think the Mountain West has clearly locked up five bids. It's inarguable. And we can talk seeding, by the way, and what's on the line potentially tomorrow. You could argue the importance of San Diego State, Utah State, is maybe the better five seed or – a five as opposed to a six, or maybe someone can still play their way to a four. I don't think Utah State can play to a four. I don't know if San Diego State can play to a four. Um, if you have thoughts on it, please comment, whether it's live or in the chat. Um, but there's a difference between being a five and a five. What do I mean by that? Each seed line has four slots, right? The number one seed, there's the top overall seed in the tournament. Then there's the number two, one seed, the number three, one seed, the number four, one seed, and so on and so forth. What's the benefit of being the top five as opposed to the fourth five seed? Well, a couple. Obviously, the top five seed theoretically is playing the weakest of the 12 seeds, and the worst five seed is playing the strongest of the 12 seeds. It doesn't always work out like that. But I'm thinking about it more from regional protection. You're not protected outside of the top four seed automatically. It's possible. You could stumble into – I mean, you could be a 12 seed one. You could be a 13 seed and be like Eastern Washington, and you're playing in Salt Lake or Spokane or whatever. But San Diego State is no longer guaranteed protection if they're not a top four seed. We'll see if they are or not. Um, you were thinking a month ago when you saw the selection committee reveal, maybe your you know, Aztecs are going to end up in Spokane or Salt Lake. Still possible. Still possible. I don't know what's going to happen. But I think there's a greater degree of possibility that it could be any of the other sites as well. Spokane, Salt Lake, possible. Pittsburgh, Omaha, Brooklyn, Charlotte, possible. You get my point. Now, the benefit, in my opinion, like it, maybe the committee says, listen, the winner of San Diego State, Utah State, they're both fives. I'm making this up. I don't know. Maybe Utah State's a six. But maybe they're saying um, they're both fives. But you know what? The winner of that game gets the better of the fives. So what does that mean? Maybe it means the quote unquote weaker 12. And maybe it means closer to home. You know, and again, complete theoretical here. But if, if there's four sites in, for five 12 games and one of them is Omaha, Pittsburgh, Spokane, Brooklyn, I'm making it up. Maybe San Diego State ends up in Omaha in this scenario, and Utah State's in Brooklyn. Like, you'd prefer to be in Omaha than Brooklyn, I would think. Everyone would prefer to be in, like, Salt Lake or Spokane. But that's just, I think, that 
these are some of the things that come into play in games like this. It doesn't necessarily mean anything from a seating or committee perspective or a slotting in. They're making a lot of determinations. The committee is over the next 48, 72 hours. They know San Diego State and Utah State are in the field. They might just be plugging them in right now and feeling good about where they're going to end up regardless of what happens tomorrow night. Or they may say, you know what? The winner of this game, they get the slight edge, and here's why. And here's where this team will go, and here's where that team will go. So food for thought heading into this Mountain West semifinal Friday night at 6.30. Um, all right, let me get to some of these live chats uh, that have rolled in. The comments in the live chat, like uh, Force Ghost Fabio earlier saying Tramel saved the season. Nothing saved the season. I don't think – now, I said this a lot. Nobody wanted to go into the NCAA tournament on a three-game losing streak. I want to say it's been six seasons either six or seven since the Aztecs have lost three straight. That's a credit to San Diego State. The players, the coaches, the support staff, everyone, the fans, that's amazing. That's amazing. Now, the last time they lost two straight was November of 2022. That is also amazing considering how good this league is this year. So nobody wanted to go into the NCAA tournament on a three-game losing streak. Is it possible to win games in the tournament off a three-game losing streak? Let me answer that. Yeah. Is it possible to lose in the first round going into the NCAA tournament on a 10-game winning streak? Yes. All of the things are possible. But from a sheer confidence perspective and not to be thinking about the past and only looking ahead to the future, it's important to get one here. Here on out, to me, isn't fully gravy. It's not fully house money, but it allows you as a team to play with confidence and play with a clean slate. You want to win Friday. You want to win Saturday. If you don't, you know, I don't know. If they lose tomorrow, could they still be a six seed? It's a possibility. I don't know. I'm not a bracketologist. I talk to a lot of people. That's probably a possibility. Maybe the loser tomorrow is a six and the winner is a five. That's absolutely a possibility. Um, what is that? So we'll, we'll see. Um, so, of course, you want to win tomorrow. And you want to win the Mountain West Tournament. And you want to hang banners. That's what this program does. But, again, your season isn't ending Friday. Your season isn't ending Saturday if you play Saturday. And the most important game on the schedule is going to be either Thursday or Friday of next week in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. But Tramel made a huge play at the end of the first half, and Tramel was terrific. I think five assists, five steals, by the way. Do I have that right? Um, I've kind of glossed that over that he had – did he have five? He did. Five assists, five steals is a massive game, especially in that – environment, tournament setting. I mean, this is a row game. Yeah, San Diego State at 80% of the crowd. But, I mean, it's a Thomas and Mack. They, they go to school there. They sleep in their own beds. They know the Rams. I mean, they are building. It's a road game. Yet, San Diego State routinely has beaten Las Vegas or beaten UNLV in Las Vegas or anywhere. It's just incredible the success the Aztecs have had against UNLV, uh, including two or three this year, which I think you'll take, especially with the third being in the Mountain West Tournament. Gustavo, what's going on, man? My friend from TJ, he says, much needed to win. But I'm a little bit worried on the offense and closing the games. Ladine and Tramel were huge tonight. Go Aztec. All that's fine. I, hey, listen. It's the th- Brian Dutcher said this to me, I think, um, maybe like November 6th, or one of the first or second games, or maybe it was when conference play started. He said, there are going to be a lot of close games in the league. Get used to it. It's going to be commonplace. The team that does best in the close games could win the league. And, and you look back on it, I think he was spot on. Utah State had some memorable moments in their regular season. That's why they were outright champions. San Diego State had chances that they didn't take advantage of at Nevada, at home against Boise State, at UNLV come to mind. You win two of those three, the season's completely different in terms of a regular season title, potentially. Uh, the game at Utah State as well. The game at Colorado State where they took a late lead. Um, but, you know, listen, I mean, they've been in so many close games over the last couple of years. These aren't just random players playing random close games. They would prefer to play in this style. They play slower with fewer possessions. They're oftentimes in, you know, five point type games. And you got to win those games and you got to hold leads. And they did it in a little bit of a circuitous way here tonight. But you got guys that have been in a lot of these games. Ladie, Butler, Jamel, Parrish, Waters, you just got to trust the process and hope that like it evens out, right? Like like the socks even out in the laundry or whatever the hell people say. Um, that, yeah, you lose a couple of games because that just happens. You don't get a bounce. Maybe you get a couple of bounces. And maybe they got one here tonight going down four in overtime to come back and win. 
Uh, Omar says, uh, back in the day, Aztecs knew how to close out games. What happened with this year's team? It's so funny, Omar, you say that. Because you know what was one of the consistent themes that people told me a year ago for a team that went to a national championship game was? They can't close out games. I heard it routinely. When? When they lost to Arkansas in Maui. When? When they lost to Boise on senior night in Idaho. When? When the Aztecs had a turnover, I want to say, late against Creighton that allowed the Blue Jays to tie the game in the Elite Eight. But they also had a knack and a gene like to overcome it. And the truth is, if you watch enough college basketball, every team, teams that are good have leads late. Therefore, they have more opportunities to blow leads late because they're good. Um, and if we looked back over the last, let's just use two years as an example, San Diego State is winning a lot of these games. Um, now this year, again, they lost some of the, the at Nevada game, the Boise State game in overtime. Like, but again, there's like some of it is like coin flip stuff. You know, it's not like, oh my gosh, against Nevada, they just had this carefree turnover that cost them the game in the final seconds. Like, it hasn't really been that. It's been other teams making plays, right? Like, Nevada made plays, Boise made plays, UNLV, Thomas, 10 days ago, made plays. So, I don't think anything has happened, truthfully. I just think some of it is, um, you know, two teams are playing and only one team is going to win. And San Diego State has veteran players and leadership and experience and maybe they're going to get end up on more of the right side than the wrong side uh moving forward maybe because it even outs or maybe not because it's basketball but I, I don't think there's really like an answer to it i don't think it can be solved um you know with more film study or it's just i don't know sometimes some things are they are what they are or it is what it is um let's see here thomas says okay so again, people are here are hot here tonight to start off the show. He says this may be the worst best team in college basketball. No chemistry. Well, how can you say they don't have chemistry if they're eighth in defensive efficiency in the nation? They don't have offensive chemistry, but they're again a better offense metrically than they were a year ago. It's not a perfect offense. Um, there's no question about it. Have they struggled from three? Yes, they would be the first to tell you. Brian Dutcher has repeatedly said for us to make a run either in the Mountain West tournament or the NCAA tournament. We need multiple shooters that are capable of knocking down multiple threes. That's what he has said. So, you know, I'm listening to what he's saying, and that is what he is saying. Tonight, you had Tramel hit three threes. He was the only Aztec to hit more than one. So they could absolutely use that secondary scoring threat from the outside. And everyone's aware of it, including the players and the coaches. They were six of 23 from three. That is below their season average. They have not shot the three ball well. They were at 26%. You'd love to see that thing in that 33 to 35 range. Nobody needs it at 43 to 45. We'll take it. But if it's sitting in that 33, 35% chance with the defense or 33, 35% field goal percentage with their defense, you're going to have to be good with that, right? This is not going to be the nation's number one shooting team this year, right? We've watched it play out, but guess what? They're a top 10 defense. They've got one of the best players in America in Jaden Ledee. They have veteran experienced guards in Darion Trammell and Lamont Butler, they have players that are fully capable in Reese Waters and Micah Parrish. Uh, Jay Powell's been a nice addition. The bench has gotten stronger as the season has gone on. Bird, Saunders, right? Heidi's been part of this rotation. So I just net mentioned your nine-man rotation, but I don't know about no chemistry stuff. And guys, they lost a game. What would you have told me if Thomas didn't hit the shot over Powell, if Max Rice didn't hit at the 45-footer at Viejas. And the Aztecs right now were just completely rolling. Had two more wins, but it would feel like they had a million more wins. And they'd be positioned for a four-seed in the NCAA tournament. Consider this. In the history of San Diego State men's basketball, they've been seeded higher than a six-seed. I did this research the other day. They've been seeded higher than a six-seed three times ever. This team could be the fourth. So it, it, they don't have no chemistry. Because in the history of the program, they've only had three teams that have secured a top-five seed in an NCAA tournament. Now, I don't know if they'll be a five-seed. They might be a six. They might be a four. But I'm just telling you where they are based on their, their body of work. Um, no, you're right, Rich. He, he, he absolutely struggled tonight. There is no question about that. And I'm sure he wishes he had one of those two free throws back late. There is no question about it. Prior two games coming in, he had hit five combined threes. Now, wasn't doing it at a crazy high percentage, but he had three in Vegas. He had two against Boise State. You just got to put this thing behind you. In fact, Brian Dutcher postgame, I read the transcript and I watched it back, I think, on video at GoAztecs.com said um, uh, he he has full confidence that Reese Waters 
and or Micah Parrish, I don't know, I'm paraphrasing, will have a big bounce back game tomorrow. So, so keep an eye on that. Because what other option do you have? You have to put it in the rear view mirror. You have to look ahead and you have to count on them to help you moving forward. Thank you, Larry Joe. Yeah, shout out Sons of Montezuma. Check them out. Um, they've got a lot of products that support San Diego State's NIL efforts with uh, the Mesa Foundation, Aztec Link as well. Uh, Bianca is saying Waters and Parrish need to show up if we want to make a run. And, and, you know, that was Dutch's overall point, not about Parrish and Waters, but about the team in general, that Ladie draws so much attention that he needs to allow his teammates, obviously, to make plays. He also needs to impact the game like he did. But because the attention he draws, others are going to have opportunities that they need to take advantage of. And we all know that. We've talked about that for months, um, ever since he's been drawing doubles, which is after about maybe, you know, three to five games into the year. And at times they have taken advantage. We've all seen it, folks. I think Parrish, I don't know the exact numbers, but through his first maybe six, eight, ten games, it was a 40% three-point shooter. Um, Reese Waters had some huge games for this team before an ankle at the midway point of the season. So they're capable, okay? They're fully capable. Um, there's adversity, um, team's game plan. Um, three-point shooting for this team obviously has been a challenge. I think at one point they were the worst three-point shooting team in the conference, they still may be. So it, you know, they don't have Adam Seiko, who's a you know 50% three-point shooter for most of last year on this team. Um, so it's a different team. And that's not a bad thing. That happens every single year in college basketball. But you know, let's appreciate this team for what they what they are and let's give them a chance to to make their mark. Let's see what happens Friday and or Saturday and or next week and hopefully beyond in the NCAA tournament. I have no idea. This was awful. I was right there. Rob Whaley stepped out of bounds like three steps. They didn't call that. I don't know. It's a tough game to officiate. You know, I don't know how San Diego State was minus three free throw attempts in this game when Jaden got fouled 17 times, but here we are. Um, they still got to the line a lot. It wasn't a terribly officiated game. Um, and I was there courtside. Was a perfect no, um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's a win. Um, all day, Ed says, we here all night then. LOL. Let's go Aztecs. Thank you. Um, yeah, appreciate you, Patrick. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm sure some of you are in Vegas, some of you are in San Diego, some of you are, who knows, um, all around the country. Uh, let me know where you're watching from, uh, whether you're here live or on replay. I'd appreciate that. I'm sure a lot of people are dialed in, obviously, with uh, March being here and with uh, the Mountain West semifinals being tomorrow night with San Diego State facing Utah State. Yeah, at the end of the – thank you, Maria. What a game from Ladin. And, again, it's easy to say, oh, we missed some big free throws. But what, what isn't easy, what people aren't saying enough about is this is the most points by an Aztec in the history of the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Think about that. They've played a zillion games. They've won a million titles. And they've had dozens of you know, first-team, second-team, all-league type performers, if not all-Americans in there as well. This is the first ever 30-point game in a Mountain West Tournament for an Aztec. He scored 34 points and grabbed 16 rebounds. It was an incredible, incredible performance from Jaden Lede. It really was. Um, Kevin says the player of the year matchup tomorrow is huge. Split the series and time to take it in Vegas. Yeah, win the rubber match. I'm with you. I think things look different than the last time we played Utah State. Aztecs playing on Saturday. I do too. I, I feel as if maybe both teams will be loose, but Utah State's the top seed. Um, I feel like there's a little more pressure on being the top seed. We'll see if that proves to be correct or not tomorrow. I think San Diego State, you just take your your best swing here. You're not playing this game in Logan. You're getting them at basically close to sea level. It's not sea level, but it's not elevation like Logan. This is your home court. This is your home away from home. Both teams are going to have amazing turnouts. Utah State had a huge crowd in there for their first game. I was in there. San Diego State, I thought, had 80% of the crowd for game two against UNLV. I think the crowd tomorrow night for San Diego State, Utah State, and then Colorado State, quote unquote, upset Nevada today. Nevada without Hunter McIntosh, and Colorado State is as good as most teams in this league. And a lot of these teams are very comparable. You got San Diego State, Utah State, Colorado State, and potentially New Mexico, um, and or Boise. I think either way, you're going to have a large turnout. I think maybe you'd have a little bit larger of a turnout if it was New Mexico over Boise. But you're talking, I don't know if they're going to sell the building out, but they might get close to selling the building out tomorrow night um let's see here thank you mikey he says butler and Tramel, the unsung heroes of the game today both played lockdown d and did a great job finding open shooters roll 
playing at its finest. Let me say this because I haven't watched the game back, and sometimes I get lost in the shuffle of just watching it play out. I will say this. As good as Thomas was down the stretch, and he was brilliant, Lamont Butler made it his personal mission when San Diego State absolutely needed to, like, turn the tide or get a stop when it was hard to get stops. Butler did a phenomenal job on a couple of those possessions against Thomas. Again, Thomas, to his credit, made plays, made tough plays, right? If you're going to make a tough two, then tip your cap. But he also didn't make every play, and some of that's because of Lamont Butler. Like, Butler really dialed it up. Again, it's cliche, but if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. If you were there, you saw how it played out. And Lamont's a brilliant defender. Um, And Darion, as evidenced by his five steals here today, and his overall play, obviously – Played really well here today, but I mean, take nothing away from Lamont or Darion in their performance here today. I think it's a really good point. I'm going to get back to the chat in a moment. I do want to remind our viewers about my friend Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. Uh, You might be thinking about your financial future, whether it's short term, medium term or long term. I am. So I set up a 15 minute free consultation with Eric Lanier, who is based in Southern California and a huge Aztecs fan. You can get to his website. You see it right now on the screen by clicking the link in the description down below. Maybe you're thinking retirement. I am. I mean, I'm only in my 40s, but what, what am I going to have enough for myself and my wife and my son? And Where am I with his college fund? Whatever your questions are, you got questions about your taxes coming up in April. Um, he can answer them all. If you're looking for a financial plan, set up a free 15-minute consultation with Eric Lanier. I did it. Trust me, it's well worth your time. I really feel a lot better about my financial future based on like two calls, a 15-minute call and a 60-minute call than I felt weeks ago, thanks to Eric Lanier. So if you support my work, if you support the channel, get in contact with Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. Click the link in the description down below. All right, let's get back to it. Um, I want to get to a super that has rolled in. Um, Thanks, guys. Subscribe if you're here live or on replay. Smash the like button. Follow me on Twitter at John Schaefer. Thank you for the super chats and the super thanks. And again, thank you for the memberships as well. Louise, thank you. Uh, She says, love the show. Appreciate your insights, John. I appreciate you saying that. I really do. Love having you guys uh, hang out here on this Thursday night. Okay, let's see. Um, I kind of got lost maybe a little bit in the shuffle. I'm trying to go back to find where we, we were. So many comments, which is good. Thomas wants to know, any thoughts on putting in Heidi at the same time as Ladie? Um, have they done that at all, Thomas? I don't have a lot of thoughts on it, truthfully. I, I don't because um, Heidi spells Ladie in terms of minutes. Like Ladie's playing so many minutes that if he's going to come out, Heidi's going to have to come in. So if they're both on the floor, it doesn't allow Heidi to necessarily spell Ladie, if that makes sense. So I, I haven't thought a ton about it. I think that's interesting. Um, Maybe there's some set plays you could run because of that. But I'll be honest, I haven't thought a ton about it, to be honest. Um, Jeff the Crusher saying 25 offensive rebounds is ridiculous. That was the difference. Yes, Dutch said that post game. He said that the difference is rebounding. They made it a priority. Yes, they were without Caleb Boone, who's a really good rebounder and a good defender. But plus 19 in a road game or a tournament game, 25 offensive rebounds. I mean, that, that's a that's a cut above. I think being plus five in any game is, is a really good mark. Being plus 19 is a huge mark. Like Rich says, if we rebound like that, San Diego State against Utah State, that'll be the difference. There's a good chance, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Utah State's a different challenge, like all these teams are. I mean, Utah State has the balance of Osibor, who, by the way, you thought Ladie drew a lot of fouls today, 17. You're like, whoa, 17, give me a break, 18 free throw attempts or whatever. Guess how many great Osibor drew today? Higher or lower than 17? The way I'm saying it, you're probably thinking higher. You're right. 20. He drew 20 fouls today against Fresno State. 20. Give me a break. Now, Fresno State doesn't have near the size, but that's still an amazing total. Um, let's see here. Defense has always kept the Aztecs in the game, no matter how bad our offense is. This is our MO. Go Aztec. Yeah, it's not like – I mean, everyone's acting like, oh, this offense is taking this huge step back. I mean, if you have followed San Diego State basketball, it's not like – They've typically had elite top 10 efficient offenses. There have been years where they've had very, very good offenses. I think this team has a lot of really good offensive weapons. I truly believe that. The 2020 team, I'd have to look at Ken Palm, and this gets me pissed when I even think about it, but thankfully we had the Final Four last year. The 2020 team was top 10 in both categories, basically. 11th in offense and 10th in defense, which is incredible because typically you think top 10 in both gives you a chance to win a national championship. So we'll never know. We'll never know. 
Um, and that's for another day. But again, that was a, a bit of a, an aberration. It's not like, you know, it's not like over the last 25 years, you've had 10 years of the top 10 offense and 10 years of the top 10 defense. No, in those 25 years, you've had a top 25 caliber defense, basically year in and year out. And you've had some offenses and, of course, some individual players that have been absolutely terrific at the offensive end. Mikey B says, really good to see Powell find his confidence to knock down a few shots and a three. He was very timid the last few games and needs the swagger. But that swagger going into the NCAA tournament, I love watching him grow because I think some of his best games, to your point, Mikey, have been at home. But now you're seeing something like today, you know, kind of like road neutral. And he did have some swagger today. And he did play a really good all-around game. I think that's a very good point. Uh, he's important. He's an important piece for this team this week and next week. And hopefully there's another week beyond that. And hopefully there's another week beyond that. <laughs> um, Thomas wants to know, why would Dutch pull the players that put them up 12? He seems to just switch out players every five to seven minutes. Well, nobody can play all minutes. These are highly competitive tournament games. So you can imagine the adrenaline that goes into it in addition to athleticism, physicality, endurance, all that. Um, they went up 10, by the way, not 12. And guys are part of rotations. It's a rotation. It's not five men. It's a nine-man rotation right now for San Diego State. Yeah, Heidi had three fouls in the first half um, here today. You're right. Um, let me get an update here on the Lobos game. Wow. Uh, Boise has made a bit of a run. It's 44-40 inside 15 minutes to play. Again, if you're watching this on replay, you already know what happened. We're saying earlier Lobos want it. We'll see. I'm, I'm sure both teams want it. Lobos need it. I'm sure Boise wants it, but Lobos need it. Um. Our, I don't know what this is. Our Perdido, by the way, thank you. It says Mike and Reese will get their groove back. They need to have their confidence back because it's all mental when you're a shooter. I mean, a lot of it is. It's a confidence game, and not just this game. Baseball, basketball. Right? I mean, a lot of sports are based on you know the mental part of the equation or the mental part of the game. Plus, you're dealing with injuries. Maybe they're nagging. Um, it, it's late in the year. You've been going at it for like six great months you've been practicing since late summer like there's adversity there's highs and lows you'd love to hit your stride perfectly at the right time um it doesn't always work like that it just doesn't always work like that and by the way the season isn't over there's always the next game until there isn't and we don't know what's going to happen in the next game that's the beauty of sports um rich says playing in the la regional is more important yeah i mean if you can get it west then here here's the thing you can never look ahead if somebody just showed me the bracket and said hey west say okay cool because it gives you a chance to get to LA. It gives you a chance. Now you got to do work. You know, you got to win, but it gives you a chance. But guess what? Last year it said South. Who cared? You know, I mean, it sounds good to get to Anaheim. Well, the Aztecs got to Anaheim two times. Sounds good to get to LA. But truth be told, you want the right matchup and you want the team playing the, the, the best basketball they can play, regardless. Like I've been saying a lot on the radio. You don't, the geography doesn't win games for you. The location isn't winning. You don't go to Spokane and win because you're in Spokane. You win because of a myriad of factors. And maybe one of which is, you know, less in travel or having your fans in the building or familiarity, but it's not the end all be all. It's a portion. It's a part of the process. Uh, Nick is pumped up. He says, let's go. It's March. Well, what seed do we want? Well, what we want is the highest possible seed is what I would say. The highest possible seed is what you want. What's realistic? Maybe outside shot at a four. I'm not sure, folks. I don't know. Again, I'm not a bracketologist. I think five is more realistic. I think San Diego State's probably down to a five or a six seed at this point. I'm leaning five. I'm biased. I hope I'm right as opposed to six. But um, that's how I see it right now on this uh, Thursday night. Kevin says, BYU, Creighton, Dayton, Duke, all lost to unranked teams today. I think a four is tough but not impossible if we went out. Great point, Kevin. Thank you. BYU losing in the Big 12 quarters. Creighton losing in the uh, Big East quarters today to Providence. A date and a quarterfinal loss is not a good loss to Duquesne. Um, and then Duke to NC State. Yeah, none of those losses are like, you know, top tier. You can fully understand. I think BYU may be the best of the, the bunch in there, truthfully. Uh, Lance says he debuted the Catapult UT today. Glad it came through. I wasn't able to. Pair the shirt with the Blender's March Red in the Shades, though. It snowed 18 inches here in Colorado, so it would have been two, and he probably went on to say something. Um, but very cool, Lance. Yes, make sure to check out, if you want the Catapult U t-shirt um, that supports San Diego State's NIL efforts through the Mesa Foundation, 
check it out at Sons of Montezuma. So just Google Sons of Montezuma and click on merchandise. And you'll find the Catapult U shirt. If you know, you know. If you don't, someone fill someone in about it in the chat. Uh, Jeff the Crusher, let's do this for another, let's say, uh, 15 minutes. Guys, what do you think? 15, maybe 20. I got nowhere to go. I'm in a hotel room. Um, I am thirsty, though. Um, Jeff the Crusher says the Mountain West has become one of the most physical leagues around. Some teams will be in for a big surprise come tournament time. I think it's a big year for the Mountain West. I've been playing this game for weeks. What's your over-under for the league in terms of tournament wins? Like, what would you sign up for? Of course, all that really matters. Like, all I care about is how many wins San Diego State has, truthfully. So I want San Diego State to be part of that equation in terms of the wins. But, like, if I told you right now, hey, five or more teams are making the tournament, would you take three combined wins from those five teams? It's not easy to win in the tournament. And the league has really struggled, other than San Diego State, obviously, in recent history in the tournament. Would you take three? Like, three means, let's say San Diego State wins two and gets to a Sweet 16 and making up. Nevada gets the round of 32. Good year? For the league, three NCAA tournament wins. Are you expecting more? Because five or more teams could go to the NCAA tournament. And by the way, it's going to be five unless New Mexico wins this game. UNLV's out, thankfully, from a San Diego State perspective. You don't want to see UNLV make the tournament going through San Diego State. So it's going to be five unless New Mexico wins this game. Simple as that. And if New Mexico wins this game, I don't know if they're guaranteed a spot, but they're closer to a spot. Uh, Mookie the Doggy says five seed if we beat Utah State, eight, nine seed if we lose. No, that's... Want to make a bet, Mookie the doggy? I'll make you a bet right now. San Diego State will not be an eight or a nine seed. Um, William says six seed is the worst SDSU can be. I agree. Now, again, I'm not a soothsayer, and I'm not one of the 12 members of the selection committee, and crazy things do happen. So would I? Would my jaw drop if I saw a seven next to San Diego State? Kind of. My jaw would literally drop if it was an eight or a nine because it's just not happening. But, yeah, I think five or six at this point. Um, Mookie wants to know, does UNLV have a shot at making the tournament of state wins the Mountain West? I think UNLV has sneaky good thoughts. They are sneaky good, and they have no shot of making the, the uh, NCAA tournament because of their three quad four losses this year. But they are playing great basketball. They are absolutely playing great basketball right now. Um, let's see here. Besides some of the obvious, the one thing this team lacks is chemistry. So that's popped up a couple of times. It's not quite all there. Still have faith to make a deep run, though. I don't... I don't see it the same way. This is a little bit like, you know, I've spent a lot of my career covering college basketball and covering professional baseball. A lot of times after a baseball game, when a team faces a good pitcher and let's say, the, you know, the opponent has three hits and a double and two singles and they lose 3-1, you say, you know, they, you know, they were um, like flat. Well, were they flat or is it a credit to their opponent that they were flat? It's like, is it for a lack of effort? Is it for a lack of chemistry or is there a credit given to game planning for opponents? Like, I think that's something that needs to be considered that, you know, result doesn't speak to chemistry. Chemistry may be a part of results, but it's not the end all be all. Great chemistry doesn't guarantee great results. Right. Um, and yeah, Rich, I was talking about this earlier. It's harder to hold a lead than make a late run. It is. I mean, again, really good teams are oftentimes leading with five minutes of playing a game. San Diego State qualifies in that. How many times has San Diego State led under Brian Dutcher the last seven years with five minutes to play? A zillion times. 80% of the time in their games, they're leading in that spot. You can't win every single time you lead with five minutes to play. You'd like to. I know Steve Fisher had that incredible run, but it just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Uh, like Nick says, yes. I mean, what takes more chemistry, offense or defense? I would argue defense. I would absolutely argue defense, and they're very connected defensively. And he goes on to say almost as if they overcompensate. Well, they use a lot of effort, right? They use a lot, you know, on the defensive end. And does that prevent them from being the offensive team you hope them to be? Maybe, but again, their defense keeps them in the game, you know? You know, I don't know. I saw someone earlier. Does someone have this? Um, I can quickly look it up. Someone earlier said San Diego State minus four and a half, which didn't surprise me. I figured the Aztecs would be favored by a couple of points on a neutral floor with all the success the Aztecs have had in Vegas. Um, you know, and San Diego State won convincingly at Viejas and lost a good game at Utah State. I am at ESPN Bet or ESPN.com, and ESPN Bet doesn't have it listed, but someone had on social media earlier, it was around four and a half. If someone has an update on that, um, if they want to put it in the chat, I can um, I'll scroll down real quickly actually to see. If anyone has not, if, if you see that, someone Google that 
and let me know if you see it. I, I'm guessing it's in the neighborhood of between three and five points. San Diego State favorite between three and five points. So if someone's able to Google that, um, I'll get to that when I get back to uh, the chat. Um, let me go back to where I was, or did someone just Google it? No, not yet. Um, where was I here? Yeah, like the great point. That, this is the point I'm trying to make. This is exactly, okay. And people saying San Diego State minus four as of now. So thank you guys, appreciate it. This is the point. Like, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And by the way, it's not for a lack of effort. Or like, they, listen, they're, they're in the gym. <laughs> Trust me. They get shots up. Trust me. But yeah, I mean, right. It's not as simple as saying better chemistry. We hit some of our open looks. It's just not as simple as that. Thanks, guys. Earlier saying four-point favorite, four-point favorite. Um, Luke is saying, what's the crowd like in Vegas this year? Aztecs and New Mexico always travel well, but this year seems like some other teams' fans showed up. Even upper deck getting sold. Yeah, I've been here, I think, six times, something like that. I don't even know, five or six times. I had never seen as many day, quarterfinal afternoon fans in attendance, never. I'd say it was probably 20 to 40% more than the other years that I've been here. Like the lower bowl has been filled, and the upper bowl has had not just like a sprinkling, like maybe for that San Diego State game, there were a couple thousand people upstairs so i thought it was a really good crowd like a it's not just for san diego state but the game prior the utah state game um tonight i don't know about colorado state honestly nevada um i don't think it was near the same crowd but i think tonight new mexico and boise is a, a pretty big uh, crowd out there uh lou wants to know why don't butler parish and water shoot more mid-range jump shots they all seem more natural from the mid-range i think butler's been shooting a lot of them and he had some success on those today um, I think Waters also likes that 15-footer, that 18-footer. I think he is comfortable with that shot. I think Parrish is more about attacking and getting to the rim or shooting the three, which I think is advantageous, by the way, truthfully. Like, those are your best percentages because the three ball piece is worth three and getting towards the basket. You know, like in that five- to eight-foot range, he's pretty comfortable there. Uh, he's good in the mid-range game at home. He's had a couple of games where he's been very good in the mid-range. But, um, you know, fair critiques, Lou, so thank you. Um, William saying really Aztecs favorite must be the I don't know what that that is they're not getting extra rest because Utah State played earlier than San Diego State um, team chemistry goes a long way last year's bunch was together for years and the offense sucked too I mean, it's a strong words guy saying it sucks uh, but look how far it took our Aztecs team chemistry is important key um, and yeah Charles saying Chemistry is imperative for defensive efficiency. Gustavo, like I said earlier, the first game of the Mountain West tournament is always like this. We're going to beat Utah State tomorrow. Believe. I'm trying to go a little rapid fire here. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that, you know, it's such a good point, William. I mean, Tremel, first of all, I think he's beaten the buzzer at the end of the first half this year six times, and none bigger than today. But six times, guys. He has a clutch gene, and you're right. He's had huge moments. His biggest career moments have been in the biggest games, Alabama, right, a year ago, South region in general, um, or performance like today, willing his team back in it. He's a special player, you know, like, like all these guys. Nobody's perfect, but he's a winner like most of these guys are, you know. Uh, GPA said, hopefully between now and tomorrow's tip time, the 15 North is busy with traffic to Vegas. This was a big win and builds momentum going into Utah State. A bench contribution tomorrow would be huge. Yeah, I'm with you on that, by the way. If you're watching me in Southern California and you're thinking, hey, why not? On a whim, get up here. Because there's a ton of Utah State people here and a ton of San Diego State fans here. It's a difference maker. I see how the team feeds off the crowd. If you're thinking about it, do it on a whim. I mean, it's not, I'm staying at a place uh, downtown right now that's very affordable, maybe too affordable, <laughs> to be honest. So you could do it for a relatively affordable rate. You really can. You drive, you stay for a night or two, um, you pick up a couple of tickets, right? This is all doable, like it, for a pretty reasonable cost. And you're supporting San Diego State and um, they need you this weekend. So I'd love to see people make that drive tomorrow, first thing. That'd be awesome. Um, Neil says the Mountain West has figured out how to play the Aztecs. Um, I think the Mountain West has built rosters that can compete with San Diego State, or that's their 
intent. Let me explain. And I'm watching Boise State, New Mexico. Um, what is the score of this game? Let's see. It is 54-47. Tyson Degenhardt for Boise at the free throw line trying to complete a three-point play. Ten minutes to play. New Mexico leading by either six or seven. Okay? Good game. Good game. Um, but, again, I think you see a lot of rosters around the league that are older, um, that are bigger and physical, that can rebound, and that kind of look like San Diego State. I think you have um, – teams that play at slower tempo, most of them, other than New Mexico in the league. I think people have tried to emulate San Diego State. That's the ultimate like compliment. The teams have tried to do that. And some teams have had success doing it. And they're going to go to the NCAA tournament as well. So I, I don't think it's a bad. I think it's a good thing when the league is good. Like, I don't think Duke wants the ACC to be bad every single year because they're Duke. I think they want the ACC to be good. I think it gives them more opportunities. I don't think Kansas wants the Big 12 to be bad. I think they want the Big 12 to be uh, to be good. Um, Dr. Aggie. All right. So now we have a Utah state troll in the chat, which is fine. By the way, I talk a lot. I, I think I'm very reasonable with my commentary in the mountain West. I, I don't unfairly, um, critique other teams, but you know, if you want to troll, you can troll. That's fine. He says, y'all got so lucky. OMG coming from a fan of a team that needed overtime to beat Fresno state today. So, you know, the shoe fits, you know, two can play this game, so to speak. Um, let's see here. Trying to catch up. Gustavo is in Guadalajara, which is pretty cool. Mookie graduated state in 2018. Then went to New Hampshire. Very cool. I ask, I guess people where they are. That's right. Um, let's see here. Patrick says I'm going to be 55 April 2nd. I've been listening to Uncle Teddy since I have been 11 years old. That's awesome. I think the TV broadcast to Uncle Teddy, super cool. I've had the great fortune of working alongside or next to, not alongside, next to Teddy for the last seven years, um, including here today, um, doing pre, half, and post, and kind of engineering for Ted as well. So that's super, super cool. Obviously, an institution here in San Diego. And I'm with, no team wanted to play any of these. I'm with you. No team in the conference wanted to play UNLV. Um Won the right game against UNLV in Vegas. Got to believe this team continues to grow. I'm with you on that. If you're picking one, I'm picking this one. Not their senior night. I'm picking this one with the chance to move on. But none of these matchups were easy. If you would have told me that the Aztecs would play New Mexico in the opening game or Colorado State or Nevada or Boise State or Utah State, none of them would have been walks in the park. None of them. A um, couple of more here, guys. Yeah, the other side of the bracket is harder to to concern myself with because I, you, you know you have to go through Utah State. And, you know, they've had this amazing year and they've won so many close games. And, and Great Osibor is a damn good player. And Darius Brown has had an amazing year. And they got good role pieces as well. It's not just those two players. I, I think it's going to be a really good game tomorrow. I do. Um, and I felt like if San Diego State got by UNLV, they put themselves in a position where they should feel pretty good heading into the weekend. And I'm sure Utah State feels the same way. You know, they, they overcame a hurdle in a quarterfinal game and now they get a chance at San Diego state and, and vice versa. And you got these players of the year facing off against each other again. I mean, it's, it's compelling. It's good theater is what I would say. Um, let's see here, guys, anything else to hit on? Um, I mean, obviously we've hit on a lot. We've hit on a lot. <laughs> so, okay. So JK says no UConn San Diego state matchup in the tournament, please. Hey, listen, honestly, I'm not opposed to it. I'll tell you why I'm not opposed to it. Because we probably wouldn't see that until like a Sweet 16 or later. Get me there. I'm all for it. If San Diego State's making a run, I don't care who the opponents are in the future once they've made that run. That's what I would say. Um, see, we talked about this earlier. I, you know, I don't know if it locks them in. I don't. Because there's other factors that go on outside of your control. There's other conference tournaments going on. Other teams are winning and losing. So I don't know if there's any locking into a seed yet. There may be. But there may be a variable. The committee may be saying this. I said this earlier, and I could be dead wrong. But they may say, here's the deal. Utah State with a win as a five and San Diego State with a win as a five and vice versa is the six. Or one's the, the better of the fives and one's the worse of the fives. Just again, speaking out loud, I think those are possibilities. Or maybe if San Diego State wins, they're the five and Utah State's the six. But if Utah State wins, they're both sixes. Like there's some variables in there. So I don't know if it's as clear as saying a lock. I think San Diego State has earned a five seed. Um, you know, I, I think that they have put themselves in position. Look at their resume. Look at the metrics. 
and basically everything supports top 20 with San Diego State. Uh, now, I would could they fall down to being the, the first team on the sixth line? Yeah, or the second team on the sixth line? Of course, because it's subjective. 12 people make this determination, and there's reasons beyond metrics that go into it as well. Could they move up to a four line? Maybe, with the benefit of other teams losing and San Diego State still winning. I still think five and six is most likely. Um, and among those two, hopefully it's a five as opposed to a, a six. Um, yeah, it is exciting, Luis. It is, I mean, it really is exciting. It's a great matchup. And nine o'clock Eastern or 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific is a, everything's great about it. You're not playing the late, late game. It's hard enough to win, you know, two games in two days, let alone, th- let alone three games in three days especially with the early turnaround for Saturday. You get it at 6.30. You don't play it at 9.15. You get it at 6.30. So it's the right time. The building's going to be electric. It's a Friday night in Sin City. Um, so, yeah, get here. Um, all Day says UNLV is trying to be SDSC Junior, the way they're building their program. I mean, Kevin Kruger, give him credit. Um, with the Boone brother transfers, with Deedon Thomas, with Rob Whaley, um, some of other, the other pieces he's, he's – put together they had a nice team this year and it'll be interesting to see what they look like and again to me that is a positive when other mountain west teams are on the come so to speak and building and i think UNLV would qualify as one of those programs that's building and you can make a case if thomas is back next year he's a vegas kid i don't see why he wouldn't for a second year um you could make a pretty compelling case for them to be an ncaa tournament caliber team which they were approaching here in 2024 all right so alex wants to know alex what's going on my man How's the accommodation in Vegas? Everything's great. Everything is really good. I'm at the Ahern, which is downtown. Um, it's new or newly renovated. It's a really nice spot. Really nice spot. Um, and it's about, you know, I don't know, 15 minute Uber, 15 minute Uber, or 20 bucks or whatever it is. So um, good spot. But I'm off the strip. I'm downtown. I, I, I stay downtown a lot. I'm usually here maybe three times a year for San Diego State related work, maybe four. Um, and I stay downtown a good amount, sometimes on the strip, but I'd say more often than not actually downtown as opposed to the, uh, the strip. Um, Alex wants to know, okay. Yeah, obviously one sixteen, two fifteen, et cetera, et cetera. What's the higher seed for the second round for the five, six seeds. Okay. So if, if seeds hold five feeds into four and six feeds into three. So if seeds hold and a five wins its first round game, it gets a four. And if a six wins its first round game, it gets a three. If seeds hold, look no further than last year. San Diego State is at five, held its seed, and then got Furman because Furman is a 13, beat the four in Virginia. But that's if seeds hold. So, again, I mean, it's so funny. I was like, oh, if, if this team doesn't get to the Sweet 16, this will be a massive disappointment. Like, well, hold on. If San Diego State's a five seed and they are fortunate enough to get to the second round, they're likely an underdog in their second game because they're going to be playing a four seed. So that's just the math of it. That's, it's hard to get to a Sweet 16. It's and San Diego State's done it three times since 2011, which is impressive. But it's it's hard. It's hard. Uh, not impossible. We saw him do it last year. Yeah, I'm a big J Pal fan as well. Um, he was great. He really was. He really was. And Alex likes downtown Golden Golden Nugget, favorite spot downtown. Very cool. Um, all right, guys. Um, I'm going to do it again tomorrow night because I am not traveling tomorrow night. I win or lose. So I don't, uh, will I do it tomorrow night with the 6.30 start? If I do it, it's going to be late, 10.30 or 11, potentially on Friday night. I'll certainly be doing it over the weekend. I promise you that. I'll be doing it, over, I mean, of course, Selection Sunday. You'll hear from me Sunday night. Um, you could hear from me Friday night. If not, you'll hear from me Saturday probably at some point if the Aztecs win. Uh, regardless, we're going to catch up on Sunday at some point, probably Sunday evening, Selection Sunday, breaking down the bracket, San Diego State's draw, its seed, its opponent, um, what's possible. Uh, it is, it's March. Anything is possible right now. It's March. Best time of year for college basketball fans. It really is. Best time of year. Um, okay, this has been a very busy day. Um, I took a 6.15 a.m. flight to Las Vegas this morning out of San Diego, um, and I've just been kind of going on adrenaline. So that's going to do it here for the wrap-up show. I want to remind our um, viewers, whether you're here live or on replay, if you wouldn't mind, just subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Um, smash the like button for me. Follow me on Twitter at John Schaefer, J-O-N-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. Appreciate the super thanks if you're here on replay um, and appreciate your memberships, guys, as well. Um, love interacting with Aztec fans, Mountain West basketball and football fans, talking, you know, San Diego State, Mountain West um, news. And again, I'll be with you this weekend. Um, we are, what, less than 72 hours away from Selection Sunday, 3 o'clock Pacific.
traffic on Sunday. Big Friday night. Big Friday night in Las Vegas, Nevada. Again, if you have any financial planning needs, if you wouldn't mind contacting Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial by clicking the link in the description down below, I would appreciate that. Uh, Eric is a terrific, terrific financial planner. You can take that from me. If you ever want the audio-only edition of this show, because maybe you're uh, in the car or you're going out on a run or you want to listen at like 1.25 speed, like people do on a podcast or 1.5 speed, or you know what I mean. Um, you can click the link in the description down below and you can get the audio only edition of the show. I upload it immediately after I do the YouTube show. So I'll be doing that here in the next handful of minutes. Um, again, the Aztecs survive UNLV in overtime. They win 74-71. They have a date with Utah State and Great Asabor and Darius Brown and Danny Sprinkle. Friday night, Thomas and Mac get here. Start driving. 6.30 is the start time. Jonas, uh, all day on San Diego Sports 760. Official pregame coverage will begin at 6 p.m. And uh, we will catch up this weekend. The Aztecs still standing. Final four here in Las Vegas. I don't even want to update the Boise State score because who cares if you're watching this right now on replay. Appreciate you guys. Seriously, every single one of you live or on replay. Appreciate you. Hope to see you this weekend. We'll catch up again soon. Go Aztecs. Thanks.